Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Massive warm welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. I'm guilty of leaving you to your own devices for a few days while I've been sunning myself, drinking cocktails on beaches and things. But it's time to get straight back down to business. I've got so many great guests queuing to come on this show in the next couple of weeks. So let's get straight back down to business. Whilst on my travels, I came across an article by Matt Fellows. Now, he's the founder and CEO of United Income. And he said, thanks to advancements in healthcare, people are living longer and retired for longer. But the financial market has struggled to find a way to extend the life of money just as effectively. So he created United Income, which is an independent money management solution aimed at people nearing or in retirement. But it's got a great tech story behind it. And Matt Fellows also founded Hello Wallet way back in 2009 before he sold it to investment researcher Morningstar in 2014 for $52 million. Now, United Income has already raised $5.8 million in seed funding, which is his second financial technology startup. But he has an incredibly refreshing approach to funding and startups. He's got tremendous experience. I can't wait to get him on the show today to find out more. So buckle up and hold on tight because I'm going to beam your ears stateside again so we can speak with Matt Fellows from United Income. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Matt. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. So I am the founder and CEO of a company called United Income, which provides financial planning, investment management, and day-to-day money management uh, for households that are approaching or in retirement in the United States. Now, I recently read on Bloomberg, I think it was, it said, finally, there is a retirement calculator that might help you retire with United Income. Uh, But for anyone listening uh, that is new to exactly what United Income is, I mean, can you offer an overview um, of what it is, what makes it unique uh, from all the other solutions out there? You know, it's interesting. Uh, There's a massive retirement market here in the United States, but for as large as that market is, there's surprisingly little in the way of solutions for retirees. Most of that retirement market is geared towards people that are still saving and working um, in expectation that they'll retire one day. Uh, But when you actually retire, there's not a lot of there, there to support you in retirement. So we saw a big opportunity in the marketplace to improve the quality of the services that are delivered to retirees. Um, And that's where we started. But as we got deeper into it, we found that actually a lot of the methodology that's used in investment management and financial planning for retirees is also, for the most part, neglected. And it created a big opportunity for us to use technology and data in in a new way to uh, create a new money management approach for retirees. Now, you mentioned using technology and data there, but when reading about United Income, what immediately struck me was that it's not all about tech, but you seem to be finding the right balance by combining new technology, new data, and human advisors. I mean, was that something that was important to you right from the the start? It is. I mean, our technology is very sophisticated. Uh, To give you a sense of that, we simulate up to 18 million different possible future outcomes for each of our members. Uh, We can talk more about that later. But but that said, uh, this retirement transition is incredibly complicated and tricky. It's also very emotional. And we felt like because of that, a human was important to be part of this equation for those people that wanted to talk to someone. I also believe that the platform also examines millions of potential future market and life outcomes. That's right. Essentially creating personalized projections of future changes in spending on health and other items too. I mean, can you expand a little on that and how it works just to help people listening visualize how it will work for them? Well, sure. So, you know, our aspiration here was to capture the reality of uh, household financial decision making. And that reality is a function of a lot of interdependent decisions um, as well as interdependent uh, events that could affect those decisions uh, that are outside of the, the household's control. So for instance, you know how much you decide to spend, um, in uh, you know groceries this week is somewhat a function of your household size. It's a function of your health. It's a function of the proximity to, that you have to the grocery store. It's a function of uh, what career you've chosen. 
uh, how much you've saved, uh, what the investment returns are to those markets. So anyway, you can see very quickly that a very discrete decision that seems simple is actually interconnected to lots of other decisions. And so our aspiration here was to capture that unified system of consumer finance by looking at not just potential market outcomes, but also life outcomes in the future that could affect your financial health. And that's things like, for instance, uh, when you claim public benefits in the United States, uh, like Social Security, uh, when you retire, um, to much more kind of practical, personal things like how your spending might change or how your health might change in the future in ways that would affect your finances. Um, and in doing so, we're just able to capture a much more rich universe of potential factors that could affect your future financial health and wealth in a way that just hasn't never before been possible. Now, I read a great quote from you, Matt, uh, a few weeks ago where it says, uh, thanks to advancements in healthcare, people are living longer and are retired longer, but the market yeah. has struggled to find a way to extend the life of money just as effectively, which is a point that you made early on in the show. But yeah. can you tell me a little bit more about that technology and what you do differently uh, at United Income to help that money last longer? Yeah, um, and, and I'll be writing more about this uh, in the future, but yeah. just briefly, uh, Really, what we're doing is using technology and data to create much more personalization in the financial planning and investment management process than has been possible before. And that personalization is reflected in a number of new and different things that we're doing. So, for instance, uh, most of the retirement solutions in the market today will hold your investment allocation pretty constant once you retire. And um, unfortunately, what that does is it overexposes people to low risk, low return investments much more than, than is appropriate because they're only asking retirees one question, which is how much risk do you want to take with your investments? Um, but if you uh, talk to a retiree a little bit more, and ask more questions than just that one, what you learn is that most retirees are willing to take different levels of investment risks depending on why they're taking that risk. So if they want to keep the lights on in their home and food's on, food on the table in their retirement, they're probably not going to want to take a lot of risk. But if they are investing to pay for a second home in retirement or to pay for a vacation or to pay to... Uh, for a bequeathment to kids, uh, they'll probably take much more risk. Um, similarly, healthcare in the United States is very expensive for, for older Americans, um, particularly those near the end of life. And for most adults, they won't be able to afford that unless they take some investment at risk. So that's one of the ways that we sharpen up and personalize the information that's used in financial planning compared to the rest of the market. We will create an investment strategy for each of these different spending needs, and that allows us to ultimately to deliver a much better result for, for the client relative to what the rest of the market's doing. We do that in lots of other areas as well. We create personalized spending projections. We create personalized longevity estimates. Um, we fuse together financial planning decisions with investment management decisions, all of which is highly dependent on technology because it means that we're just having to manage a huge amount of data for each of our members, something that just analytically hasn't been possible before without without the creation of all this new technology. So as with any investment, there are always elements of risks. So when you personalize that risk, are you always getting a completely different picture when comparing to that one size fits all that traditionally goes with these kind of investments? It's always different. Yeah. Each each individual is different. And, you know, it's, it's very, at its core, it's very simple what we're doing. We're just getting rid of waste and inefficiency created in and investment plans by using technology to really personalize this off-the-shelf generic general information that's been used in the past. And by the way, that was a perfectly fine approach in a world that didn't have all this data and didn't have all this technology um, power. But, but in that world, we can really imagine a much uh, more sophisticated, much more accurate, much more robust way to manage money. And that's, that's really the vision that we're trying to bring to life. And the results are unambiguous. 
uh, we're able to generate uh, much better returns for longer periods of time relative to any other major solution in the marketplace that we've looked at. And that ranges from your lowest cost discount target date fund to your highest cost uh, financial advisor approach and everything in between that we've looked at. Um, because really no one else is looking systematically at trying to get rid of all these things in money management that are weighing down your portfolios and adding costs and and, and just uh, excess waste. Now at United Income, you've also recently announced this new money management solution. Uh, it's only been recently you've actually announced this. I mean, is it all following these same principles? I mean, can you just explain how that works for retirees? Yeah, that's right. So it, it is. Um, the, the approach is few using together financial planning and investment management to create this new approach to money management that's much more personalized and is based on the principle that we can use technology and data today uh, to really improve the sophistication of the plans and, and models that are used in investment management today. Um, so one of the ways we do that is through this uh, investment risk management, which we just talked about. Another way is by creating these pers- personalized spending projections and longevity. Another, though, is, is using all of these other tools that are at the disposal of people today to improve their financial health that live outside of investment management. So that's things like trying to minimize taxes, trying to m- maximize public benefits like Social Security, um, trying to take advantage of um, uh, various estate laws affecting bequeathment um, and, and other uh, taking advantage of tax laws to optimize the withdrawals um, or the ordering of withdrawals from different accounts in retirement uh, and so on. And so it's this, this holistic view into someone's finances that's really empowered uh, all of these new levers that can be used to help people grow wealth for longer periods of time and really extend the life of their money. Now, United Income famously raised, I think, $5.8 million in seed funding last year in 2016. But it's also your second financial technology startup. I mean, you founded Hello Wallet back in 2009 before selling it to investment research firm Morningstar in 2014 for $52.5 million. And also you went on to become Morningstar's chief innovation officer. So I've got to ask you, what have you, what have you learned along the way of these various startup journeys? <laughs> Uh, Boy, um, (laughs) I I would reframe that as uh, a question being, what haven't I learned? Uh, Because I just, I made so many mistakes the first time around and and fortunately uh, was able to convert that that first experience into a successful exit and a a very successful um, experience at Morningstar. But um, I did along the way learn about who to take money from, uh, board management, uh, team management, how to hire, manage, fire, lead people, um, marketing, sales, enterprise sales, and direct-to-consumer sales and marketing, um, uh, f- the financial management of a company. I mean, it was just sort of across the board, a very rich uh, collection of lessons that for me was, was really my business school experience. And I would, so it'd be very hard for me to pinpoint one or two lessons. I really felt like I, I learned how to grow a business successfully. And, and, you know, one of those lessons was not to raise too much money too quickly from people that you don't want to. So I've, I've raised, what, 5.8 to date. Uh, we've been approached by, I think, as of yesterday, 52 different firms wanting to um, talk about investing in us. And we haven't talked to any of them. Yeah. Um, because uh, at this point we we you know we're totally we're well capitalized and we, we don't need any other money at some point we might but but at this point we're just fine that's so refreshing to hear that approach to yeah. it it's really, very it's very contrarian yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean I think that the measure of success in the startup world is is really wrong and that is how much capital have you raised um, you know in, in no other part of life are you measured by how much debt you've taken on or how much of something you've sold that you own uh, so it's just it's bizarre and it's it's totally unproductive so I we we have taken a very disciplined approach to raising money 
Yeah, I mean, I know we shouldn't mention names, but Snapchat obviously comes straight into your mind that uh, <laughs> the valuation of the company, but they don't actually make any profit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to force what, you to comment. You've, you've got to look at discounted cash flows and yeah. what they expect to do in the future. But yeah. but that said, yes, I, I think it's it's largely a financial engineering game at some point with, with these companies. And, yeah. you know, another, another thing to take into account is that the uh, capital of, of these firms at the the institutional investors, uh, particularly the venture guys, they just have so much capital to deploy, and they, um, you know, the law of averages mean that those companies that are breaking out really need to absorb most of that capital because that's really where they're they're able to make up the returns of their portfolio to pay back their investors and make a return for themselves. Um, but but at that point, it ceases to become really about the company, and it becomes more about a financial engineering exercise. Um, so we we certainly want to avoid that fate. Uh, that seems fairly straightforward. Have the the bigger problem for us that we're trying to solve is with so many options for capital. We just want to make sure that we're we're choosing money from the right person and the right team uh, and the right right firm. So what's next for United Income? I mean, how do you see that evolving with the it's the incredible speed of uh, hyper change in the tech industry at the moment. I mean, how, how do you see uh, you progressing forward with this? Uh, continuing to out innovate everybody. Yeah. Um, so I think I think firms can get at our stage can get very distracted with with all the big checks that they're they're looking at and and the prospect of scaling and growing very quickly. Um, in, in our case, I mean, if you look at, at where enterprise value is actually generated for shareholders, it's through um, uh, out-innovating uh, incumbents. And so that's, that's kind of front and center, our focus, and we'll continue to stay focused on that uh, in the near term. We're growing at a very healthy clip. We've just rolled out uh, a private launch uh through two months ago, two and a half months ago, and we've already accumulated over $200 million in assets. Uh, so we 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 feel very confident uh, about our ability to grow, and at this point are just continuing to to drive that growth alongside with a very ambitious innovation agenda. So finally, before I let you go, can you point the listeners in the direction of the United Income website, uh, contact details, and what will be waiting for them, or how they can get the most out of the platform once they arrive at the website? Sure. So the website is unitedincome.com, and when you arrive, you can uh, explore the site with uh, very detailed information about all the other all uh, services and our unique methodology and our value system as a company, which we felt like is important. So for instance, uh, we've taken the volume voluntary step to become fiduciaries, which legally obliges us to act in someone's best interest. Um, But in addition to that, you'll find an ability to sign up. And if you do select that option, you can generate a financial plan for free. Uh, At this point, we're we're not charging for that. We may in the future, but you can take advantage of quite a bit of the power for free. Um, If you decide to to, uh, have us manage your money or receive a retirement paycheck, then at that point, we'll start charging you a minimum fee, but but you can use quite a bit of the product uh, for free if you'd like. Well, a huge thank you for coming on the show today. I really appreciate you taking the time. You've had a tremendous startup uh, journey, not only uh, here, but also with Hello Wally. Uh, but I love how you've, you're keeping a sensible approach to the funding, but also you're combining technology, new data, and most importantly, human advisors. You've got that great mix there going on. So a big thank you for coming on and sharing your story. Nice talking to you. Like I said in the show there, what I love about what Matt is doing here with United Income is his refreshing approach to funding, but also how he's combining technology, new data and human advisor. And I think it's so crucial to remember the importance of including all three of these in any startup, in any industry. I also read a great quote by Matt saying, by harnessing powerful new technology and growing a body of data and academic work, We've been able to invent a new approach to money management that aims to extend the life of money. And let's face it, that's something that we all need to do. So it's a fascinating startup story. It's great to see that a problem being solved that I think a lot of people don't even think about, probably until it's too late. So uh, 
Again, a big thank you for Matt coming on the show today, telling us all about that. As always, let me know your thoughts about tonight's episode and any of the guests that we've had on here. Equally, if you'd like to appear or you have any questions that you'd like me to answer, you can email, you can get me by emailing me at techblogwriteroutlook.com or also tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. But we're out of time, I'm afraid. I've got to ease myself gently back into this game, haven't I? Don't want to burn myself out after a holiday. Uh, but rest assured, I will be back tomorrow with another guest but until then a big thank you for listening and until next time don't be a stranger thanks for listening to the tech blog writer podcast until next time remember technology is best when it brings people together 